Hello and welcome to this lesson on two source interference, which is part of the waves topic in AQA A level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at look at how interference patterns form from two sources. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can identify what we mean by coherent sources. We can describe the process of superposition and then we can identify the phenomena of superposition in the real world, which looks at the following part of the AQA A level level physics specification 3.3.2.1 interference. Now two source interference is when waves from two different sources interfere with each other to produce a pattern. Now to get a clear interference pattern uh, the waves from the two different sources must be monochromatic and coherent. Now monochromatic means that the wave consists of a single frequency or wavelength whilst coherent means that the waves have the same wavelength slash frequencies the same amplitudes and have a constant phase relationship a fixed phase difference. Now light is an example of a coherent source of light waves. Now interference will still happen if the waves are not coherent but the pattern formed would not be very clear. Now with coherent waves clear patterns of constructive and destructive interference are seen. So if for example we would look at this pattern on a screen you would see patterns of light and dark fringes being observed if the two, if the two wave sources were light. Again you can see this in the real world by um, two laser the sources interfere with each other in producing the following image and pattern on that screen. Now what we see here is a clear pattern of constructive and destructive interference. Now whether you get constructive or destructive interference at a point depends on how much further one of the waves has traveled compared to the other wave to get to that point on the screen. Now the amount by which the path traveled by one wave is longer or shorter than the path traveled by the other wave to get to that point is called the path difference. Now it's important to note that any point in, in, at any point an equal distance from two sources are in phase you will get constructive interference. So these points are what we call maxima. So you can see maxima are where the waves have traveled an equal distance okay, to get to that or in multiple of that wave. So at a maxima the path difference between the two waves is a whole number of wavelengths and at a maxima the, the two waves are in phase with each other and have a, a phase difference of zero. So what we can say is that for a const constructive interference which is where maxima form you get a path difference of n lambda where n is any integer. So for example the central maxima you, you can see here on the screen has a path difference of zero lambda whilst the two maxima on either side of that one have a path difference of one lambda whilst the next two either side have a path difference of two lambda. Now at any points where the path difference is half a wavelength difference between the two waves the, the waves arrive completely out of phase with each other and therefore interfere destructively. So these points are called maxima Oh, sorry, minima, my apologies, they're called minima. So you can see here the different minima forming. Now at a minima, the path difference is half a number of wavelengths. So we can say that the phase difference at a minima is that the two waves are out of phase with each other and have a phase difference of pi radians. So for destructive interference, the path difference is 2n plus 1 over 2 times by lambda. So what we can see here is the two inner minima have a path difference of a half lambda while the outer two minima in this diagram have a path difference of 3 over 2 lambda. Now it's easier to observe two source interference for sound waves and for water waves as they have wavelengths that can be easily measured but you can also do you can also observe this process happening with microwaves as well. Now remember to, you need to produce coherent waves to get this interference pattern and to produce coherent wave sources easily you tend to find that the same oscillator or same generator is used to produce both waves. So for example if it was water waves you'd use the same vibration to produce the two waves which would then interfere with each other. So it's important to think of that idea and as you can see in this diagram we've got a setup of how you can do this for a microwave. So the same transmitter 
is producing the wave and then the two individual sources are produced when they pass through two gaps. Now if sound waves are interfering with each other you would get areas of reinforcement which would be areas of loud noise and areas of cancellation which would be silence. So the loud areas are areas of constructive interference whilst the silence is, uh, is an area of destructive interference. Now what you can do in an experiment is that you can mark the positions of the constructive interference regions or or the, the positions of the destructive interference regions and then use a ruler to measure the space between them and then you can work out different values for your wave. Now, if it was microwaves that are interfering with each other, you'll get areas of high readings where you've got areas of reinforcement in areas with no reading, areas of cancellation. So if microwaves are used, you can then measure the areas of high readings and the zero readings with a probe, and then you can do the same methodology you do with your sound wave to work out different values. Now, it's important to note that as you move between areas of constructive and destructive interference, you will see still record values so as interference is still taking place it's just not the maxima or it's not just the minima now what you would do is you would record values either increasing or decreasing in magnitude about the maxima and minima okay when you're moving between those two values so to summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson we understand what path difference is we understand what coherence is and that interference and diffraction using laser as a source of monochromatic light so if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to identify coherent sources in physics, we can describe the process of superposition, and we can identify the phenomena of superposition in the real world. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on two-source interference, which is part of the WAVES topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.